Hey, welcome to Crossroads. My name is Joe. I'm one of the pastors around here. It is great to see you this morning. This service will be followed with a really nice uh, potluck and barbecue. So as the, uh, like we start to smell the hamburgers and the hot dogs, that'll be my cue to uh, pick up the pace a little bit. But you are at a family service. And if you are newer to Crossroads and you've never been to a family service before, this is a time when the kids are a big part of the service. I got my buddy Gabe here standing next to me. Everybody say good morning, Gabe. Good morning. And Gabe is going to help get us started off uh, with some prayer. But basically what happens in this service is this is a time where the children are in the service with us. We're going to do some special things with them today. And then about halfway through the service, we will send them back with Miss Shannon for a lesson and then we'll continue on with our adult lesson. So it's important that we begin with prayer. And that's why I got my buddy Gabe here. And I believe he is ready. Yeah. Yes, you are. So I'm going to give that to you. And if you would bow your heads and join Gabe as he leads us in prayer. You God, we thank you for the amazing, beautiful world you created. Help us to care for it. We thank you for the wonderful, unique people you have made us to be. Help us to care for one another. We thank you for the incredible, tasty foods that we are going to eat after service. Help us remember and care for those who are hungry. We thank you for the inspiring stories and teaching in the Bible. Help us share this good news with people everywhere. We thank you for Family Sunday and for Crossroads. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. All right. Sarah's got some announcements for us. Good morning, Crossroads. Good morning. Oh, okay, we've improved since last time I did this. <laughs> all right. It's great to see you all here. My name is Sarah. I help out by serving on the leadership team, amongst anything, other things. So if you have questions, just about anything, let me know, and I can get you to the right person. Um, we're glad to see you if you're visiting or if you're online. There are people visiting. It's so full. It's so great. There's another baby back there that I've never met. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, so announcements for today. First, this is Back to Church Sunday, which is why we're so full. We're glad that you're all here. We get to eat after this, and that's probably... Another reason. Yeah. Another reason. Not the, maybe not the best reason, but another reason to be here. So we're glad that you've chosen to join us. Um, we have youth group meeting tomorrow night from 6 to 8. That is middle school, so 6th grade through high school, 12th grade. Tonight, it says tomorrow night. I know, we all know it's tonight, right? Youth group Sundays. Okay, so drop your kids off. Ben and Michaela will take care of them for two hours, teach them a little bit about Jesus, play games. It's a fun time. Um, and then we have the quest party coming up. That is Friday the 18th. That's grades three through five. Make sure if your child's going to come that you sign up in the, um, at the welcome table or talk to Miss Marin or Miss Shannon about joining that event. It's a great time. The kids get together and hang out. So we'd love to see them there. It's our hope here that you're connected in whatever way you see fit. There's plenty of places to plug in. If you need help finding a way, you can email us at info at ecrossroads.net. Check the welcome table. Touch base with someone who looks like they know what's going on after service. Um, check out our Facebook page, Crossroads Church. So again, it's great to see you all today. Please join our worship team in the call to worship. Good morning. All right. Oh, you got this? I got one thing. Hang on. Okay. Um, first of all, that's the 830. Yeah, no, have a, have a seat still. That's the 830 call to worship, and there is a 10 o'clock call to worship that's a little bit different for the kids. Um, all right, but before we get to our call to worship, we got some celebrating to do. You guys ready back there? Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. All right. So in no particular order... We won't go like youngest to oldest or anything, but we have a full age range of birthdays to celebrate today. <laughs> One, 
The one and only Sharon. Yeah, she's like, yeah, she's like, you have to celebrate my daughter Shelly. Also, Shelly, happy birthday. But Sharon's birthday. Shelly's birthday. Is it true, Austin, that this week you turned five years old? You did? That's fantastic. All right. Am I? I got Sharon, Shelly, Austin. Are we missing anyone? Oh, we're... Am I not supposed to, am I supposed to say Sheila or no? <laughs> Sheila's like, and the people next to her are like. <laughs> so Sheila and how could we forget Gina? Gina over here. Woo! So I'm not going to be able to fit all of these names easily wait, wait, into the wait. song. This is, come on, let's hear it. Here, do a practice run so we'll know how to do it when we get there. Okay, so I'll sing the rest of it. Emma, you get the name. Go <laughs> I'm going to give them to you one more time. Sharon. Oh, oh there's more? What? There's Sarah, too. Sarah. How, how could you miss Sarah? Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to see if I can do it all. Okay, so Joe is There's a lot of S's like on, going on here. The there's a lot of S's. <laughs> oh Sharon. Shelly. Sheila. Sarah. Austin. Gina. Did I get them all? All right. <laughs> all right, here we go. Seriously? Seriously. Okay. <laughs> you guys ready for this? Because we're going to need some help. It's just going to be a jumble. And we apologize in advance to all of you for missing the names. All right, here we go. We're going to sing happy birthday nice and loud. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Sharon and Sheila and Austin and Sarah. Gina, I missed somebody. Happy birthday to you. Now, would you please rise and join us in our call to worship? The response today, the response today is happy are we. You will maybe recognize this from Matthew's Gospel. This is what we call the Beatitudes, but kids' version. So the response is, happy are we. When we come together to worship God. Happy are we. When we realize that God loves us. Happy are we. When we hear God's call to bring light into the world. Happy are we. When we share God's love with our neighbor. Happy are we. Let's lift our voices and worship the God of love. Amen. All right. All right, you guys, I hear from a little bird that this is a song that a bunch of our kids know. So I expect, oh, I got motions coming too. All right, so I need to see and hear you. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Let's have church. Let's join the heavenly sound. There's nothing like your presence when the praise. Let's tear the roof off this house Cause many things can happen When the praise breaks out Yes, awesome There is freedom There is fullness of joy When we worship the name Worship the name of the Lord right now Jesus He's everything and more Let's worship the name Worship the name of the Lord here we go. Let's have church. Let's have church. Let's join the heavenly sound. There's nothing like your presence when the praise breaks out. Let's have church. Let's hear the roof of this house. Cause anything can happen when the praise breaks. One more time. Let's have church. Let's have church. Let's join the heavenly sound. 
praise breaks out. Woo! Good job. All right. We have, uh, we're going to take, we're going to take our offering uh, right now. And as we do that, we're going to start the baskets in the front. And if you can just keep them moving, we will pass them back to you. It, or keep them moving, and Joanne will uh, pick them up from you in the back. If you're visiting with us today, feel no obligation to participate in this part of the service. We are just glad that you're here. We say we want this to be a place of freedom, and we know that when we take an offering that sometimes, you know, that can feel like a place where we don't have freedom. But in Christ, we have been set free. So again, feel no obligation. To participate, and this, we use this time to reflect on the words of Scripture. And today we read these. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to, able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect Will And we're going to speak more about this in our message today. The message will be compacted a little bit because, you know, we've got, we've got all this going on. But we are going to talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus and what a life of discipleship, what that looks like. Now, you may notice I'm standing up here in a t-shirt, and this is last year's 5K t-shirt. And we're going to be doing the 5K again next weekend. And to help us understand what happens with the 5K, we got Sarah's back with us. Welcome, Sarah, back. <laughs> Sherry asked a good question if I'm running to. No, I won't be <laughs> running this year. But she does bring a good point. If you see this 5K and you're intimidated and scared to run, but you would like to still help, we do need volunteers. So we have all the setup covered, all of the foods covered. There's going to be donuts from Blake's, just a perk of coming. We need oh, people. Wait. Donuts from Blake's and Pop Daddy. Uh, oh, the popcorn stuff. Yeah. yeah and pretzels. There's like 50 different flavors. So there's food, right? Again, we're a very food it's, yeah, church. Yeah. Isn't there something about like eating together? It's coming in the message, yes. It's in the, <laughs> gosh, look at that. I've been studying. Um, <laughs> okay, but we need people to stand along the route. So Joanne has a beautiful map that will tell you where to go. You just stand there, you cheer people on, you point them in the right direction. Apparently, I heard earlier that our first 5K, we had some non-Crossroads people that may have veered off course. They did. Did they come back? Well, we did find them eventually. Okay, so, <laughs> so we need you. If you're not a runner, or if you're someone who has little kids, and you're like, All right, there's no way my kid can do this, bring them. They're great at cheering. You good at cheering? Yeah, he yeah. smiled and not, oh, he's, he told me no, Austin's out. All right, but we would love to have you volunteer in some capacity if you would like to get involved. Don't feel like your unwillingness to run excludes you from this event. It's also a family event. So if you do yes, sign up to walk so. or run, and there's a bunch of you in the family, and you can only afford for one person, please still show up, right? We have spots, we have space for you. Don't let finances ever be an yeah, obstacle yeah, yeah. here at Crossroads for you. And... I, I got that. You keep talking. Okay. Um, so th there's codes like coming from the back. <laughs> I, I got it. Uh, I'm going to use this as you're done. Okay. So, <laughs> but I wanted to say what the 5K is supporting. So we do this once a year. This is our third official year doing the 5K. It's supporting three great groups from the local community. Um, Capernaum Community Health, which offers like free mam mammograms, free dental, medical care for Not people who just deal. can't afford it. So... That's a great organization to support, as well as we active... Have two, we yeah. have two people in our congregation who have had breast cancer diagnosed through that clinic and gotten the care that they needed and gotten it caught at a timely fashion. Uh, you know, so it's a really important clinic. For yeah. 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 Right? Right. So the other one is Active Faith, which you've probably seen in action in the community. They help out a lot. They just got a new building, um, but we love to support them as well. They do a food pantry, a clothing dry. I mean, clothing closet. Just so much comes Case from active work, faith. They, yeah, they do so much good. And then Renewed Hope Counseling Center, which is located in the farmhouse in the front, if you're new to Crossroads, and that also offers low cost counsel, low or no cost counseling to people in need. Right, mental health. We're 
there's always a crisis, and, and they're here for you if you need them, and they're here for the community. So this is how Crossroads gets together as a community and participates to raise funds for these three groups. So we would really love for you to come out. Again, whether that's running or cheering or eating snacks, but you're there because community is so, so important. Um, is it, or, or walk. Most people walk. Most people walk. Yeah, with their wa with their, walk. Not their walker. Um, yes, you could walk with your walker, but I meant stroller. You can bring dogs. Okay, I, maybe I didn't say that out loud, but it's cool. You can. Miss Shannon you has can. massive dogs she brings. It's cool, okay? <laughs> it's just a great time to get together, so please take advantage of that. Again, if you have any questions, I'll be outside so after. This was a question that came up in the last service, so I'll, I'll just repeat it here. So if, if you want to know where it's at, if you know South Lyon, the middle schools are at Nine Mile and Pontiac Trail. We start at the middle school, and then we walk on, basically on the bike path most of the way. We go down the bike path, back to McCaddy Park, and then from McCaddy Park, we just go through the neighborhood to get back to get back to the track at the middle school. It is a lot of fun, and it's just a good a good time to be out in the community and showing this, the community that we support um, these things. I got one more thing I want to say, which is this: this envelope came in last week, and it's had seventy dollars in it in cash, and it said for the five k. If you meant if you wanted to register. If you are turning this money into register, then uh, please see Sarah or myself or Joanne afterwards so that we can make sure that you are registered. We should also say that this lovely shirt this year will be what color? Blue. It'll be, it'll be a, a yes, blue. Yes, because yeah. it couldn't be orange. I didn't want to look like a pumpkin this year. <laughs> um, I, I feel like I may have just included a group. So just to touch on this. Yeah. If you want to bring your walkers and your strollers and that. But also if you are a competitive runner like... These <laughs> individuals, which are great, that's excellent. Yeah. It is timed. So when it you register, timed. it is timed. It is a legit race as well. So. And we are, for the first year, we are going to have age group awards. So you people who are quick, uh, you know. It's time to compete. Time to compete. And you who are not quick, it's time to just be there and have fun. <laughs> All right. All right. I think we covered everything about the 5K. Oh, no, I got one more thing to say. You, you're good, Sarah. So I don't know if we're going to do this n next year, but we used a new company this year to help with registration and sign up. And they had this thing where they're like, when you get closer to the race, you got to, we're going to up the, we up the cost because it, it, it gets people to come out. Okay. I, I think next year we're going to tell them to turn that off. We didn't think about this ahead of time. Now it's here and I feel silly saying Please register tonight by midnight or you'll have to pay five more dollars. But please register tonight by midnight <laughs> because then this company jumps up the price by five bucks. It's $30 if you register today. It's $35 if you register at 12.01 a.m. Okay, so, all right. I'm looking at my list because family service. Oh, back to school, back plaque, blessing. All right, I'm going to have... The kids, come on up. Kids, before you come up, if you don't have your backpack with you, that's not a problem. I still want you to come up. Okay, so if you don't have your backpack, please still come out. If you have your backpack, come on up and, and come join us up front here. And we believe we're going to have enough. But if we don't, we... Uh, We'll be taking, all right, here you go. Miss Kelly, will you help me pass these out? What's that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, kids are going to come on in, up. All right. Okay, um, Miss Shannon, where did Miss Shannon go? Did we lose? Did she, oh, come on up here. Uh, Pastor Dave, come on up. I, I think we got Pastor Ben helping set up tables and stuff in the hallway. Uh, if Pastor Ben is near, if he's not doing picnic setup, 
if we could get him in here, that would be awesome. Is Miss Ma- can Ma- Marin's got kids. We probably it's probably violating laws to have Marin leave the children by themselves. Okay, we'll leave Marin where she is. All right, <laughs> all right. So these we want to pray over these kids right here, and we thank God for the gift of all of them, the gift they are in this world, the gift they are in our lives. And then as we pray for them, um, when we're done praying and bl- doing a blessing over them. We're going to give you guys this for your backpacks. And I understand there's some sweets in there. But here's the thing that's really important in here. In each one, there is a bookmark. And this bookmark reminds you that God loves you, that God is with you. God is with you every school day. And it's signed by all the different pastors of this church. So that just to remind you guys that we are with you and we're rooting for you. And we've always got your back, okay? If you, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss Kelly, the wise one, says, and it's important that you open them later at home, <laughs> later today, okay? And Miss Kelly, would you, you're joining us for the blessing, right? Yes, thank you. Okay, and if you're comfortable just extending a hand of blessing these guys' way. We appreciate it. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for the gift of your love. We thank you for the gift of all these children. We thank you for how you've created them. We recognize that they are created in your image, that they are just full of life and energy and fun, and they're inquisitive. So be with them and guide them and lead them throughout this school year. For those difficult moments where they're feeling down, just wrap them in your love. Remind them that you've got them, that you love them, and that they have a community here and a family that cares for them, that loves them, and that is rooting for them. Just keep them safe. Let them grow in your love and in your wisdom and your way. And all God's people said, amen. 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 All right. So we're going to pass these out again. If we don't have enough, um, we're going to make a... But I think we're gonna be I think we're gonna be close, but I think we're gonna make it. All right. We got enough. We're good. All right. We made it. We made it. We're good. And let me just point out, we make it, we make it because Miss Kelly over here just does such a great job with Family Worship Sunday, just keeping it fun for the kids. And she and working on all the details. Well, our next detail is, you know, every week, if you're here on a, reg- a weekly basis, what you see is we start, and then the kids are in just for a little bit, and then we send them back, right? Well, today, um, <coughs> excuse me, today as we send them back, they're going to have a lesson like they have every week, and... They always have a Bible point, and they always have a memory verse. And this is what Ms. Shannon works with them on, and then that helps them grow in their understanding of who God is and so that they can live out this faith that we have. So when we do Family Service Sunday, you get to hear the Bible point, and you get to hear the Bible reading. So today, do the thing on your lap. Make a lot of noise. The one, the only Aiden. Aiden's coming on up. I'm going to hand that. Do you want me to hold it or do you want to hold it? You got it. All right. Aiden, what is our Bible point today? We can start right here. Good morning. My name is Aiden. I am going to read to you Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Our Bible point for today is love is the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. So the Bible point for today is love is the fruit of the Spirit. So the next thing that's going to happen right now is that the one and only Cody is going to come on up here. And Cody has put something in this box. I see Pastor Davis. He's got... He's pretending like he's working, but really, <laughs> he needs to be up here helping out. And here comes Miss Shannon. She is got, she's got, you want to get your team together first, Miss Shannon? <laughs> All right. Okay. So here's how this works. The Bible point for today is love is the fruit of the Spirit. Cody has been thinking hard. He has put something in this box, and we're going to pull it out, and then it's Pastor Dave and I against Miss Shannon and her team. I know she picked a bunch of older ones this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then we both got to connect what's in the box to the Bible point, and then you are all the judges, so you get to decide who the winner is. All right. All right, Cody. Drum roll, please. Oh, this, you put him up to this. <laughs> you did make it hard. This is very cool. This is, this is a horseshoe. Do you, what do you want to say about Do you want to say anything about this horseshoe? It's been under a horse's foot, as you can tell, as you can tell by the wear marks. Do you want to say anything about what your dad, I mean, he does a lot of things. He's a firefighter, but what else? What's, what, what? His feet. He works on horses' feet. feet. What, do you know what that's called? A farrier. A farrier. He is a farrier, and he, is this one of his? Yeah. It is? Okay. All right. So, thank you, Cody. Uh, so this is a horseshoe. And the fruit of this, love is the fruit of the Spirit, so we have to tie love is the fruit of the Spirit to a horseshoe. And um, Meg, where are you at? Yeah, do, start the doo-doos for us. Doo-doos. <laughs> okay.
Wait. Well, We're going first. you're going. <laughs> <laughs> Raylan's like, that's how confident we are. Let them go first. <laughs> we got this. All right, here we have, as we all now know, a horseshoe. Okay? And this horseshoe, I'm not, if you didn't know, goes on the foot of the horse. <laughs> and this becomes then the foundation for that horse's leg. This is what the horse is standing on at all times. And it's so important that the horse never loses its foundation that they literally, very gently and nicely, nail it into their hoofs. <laughs> so there it is, nailed in so that they can never go, and that is like our relationship with Jesus. It is the foundation on which we stand and we want to nail it in so that we never get separated. And when you do that, right, like many horses they use for therapy, because sometimes they can be gentle and kind, just like the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, so here's what we came up with. All right. All right, so... The love of the Father is poured onto the people, and the people pour their love onto others. Well, and if you have a horse, in order to care for them properly, when you need them to work for you, you must put shoes on them. Okay. So the love of the Father pours into the people who prepare their horse and pours into the love of the horse, and it all is beautiful. So and it's all beautiful. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit in action. That's all right. She brought the Trinity in. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we can top that. I guess she did get a Trinitarian argument. She did get the whole <laughs> Trinity in. That was very impressive. <laughs> All right. You guys ready to vote? Yeah. All right. If you think Pastor David, I won. Let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. If you think the kids won today, let's hear it. Cody, Cody, you let him again. He's a good man. Thank you. All right. I am going to give the box. I think I'm going to give you the shoe. Your dad might need that. And I'm going to give the box to Miss Kelly. All right. And on a normal Sunday, we always take um, communion. We're going to take communion on a uh, family Sunday as well. And one thing we say, always say at this point of the service is that we always say that as parents, you, nobody knows your kids better than you do. And so you know when your child, you feel your child is ready to take communion. If you would like some help with that, we do have a class that's available. You can have that instruction on your own uh, with your kids at home. But if you'd, like, if you'd like some help with that, you can let us know. And then what I do is I meet with you as the parents so you as the parents and then your child, we all meet together and we talk through um, communion and what it looks like to take that. And then if you feel your child isn't ready for communion, that's fine. Um, Carter is going to be up here when we take communion in just, a, in just a couple of moments here. And Carter will be sitting here with uh, a basket of suckers. And so kids who aren't ready for um, communion are welcome to, to take a sucker when they come on up. But we take communion, we do it every week, and one of the reasons why we do communion every week is because Jesus said, do this, do this in memory of me. So what are we remembering? Well, we're remembering what the Apostle Paul told us, that when we eat the bread and we drink from the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When we proclaim Jesus as Lord, we're proclaiming that he's God the God that we love and the God that we follow, the God that we put our trust in. And when we proclaim his death until he comes, we're proclaiming the fullness of that death, that that death frees us from our sins. And as Jesus dies and then rises to new life, we are invited to die to our sin, to those things in our lives that just 
don't help us love God and don't help us love other people. And then to rise into that new life that the kids are going to learn about in just a minute, that life that results in the fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the faithfulness, the gentleness, the self-control that God fills into our lives through the Holy Spirit. So we rightfully then call him Savior. So to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes is to proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. And if you've never done that before and you'd like to do that today, well then, praise God, please do that. And then see me afterwards or Pastor Dave afterwards and we can talk about what a life of following looks like. But we do this because we're following. And we're following Jesus who told us on the night before he died when he took bread and broke it. He gave it to his loved ones. He said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This, this is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. Then he took a cup. He said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This cup is my blood shed for you, shed for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. If you join me in prayer, and in this prayer, I'm going to leave just a little bit of a pause. And in that pause, I'm going to invite you to uh, just do a little work with God. And I'll invite you to confess those places where, you know, we we talk about following God, but you just recognize, you know what, this is the area of my life where I I could be following God better, and I need God's help to do that. So if you join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you, and we come this morning seeking you, so we call to mind those places, and we confess to you those places where, you know, we're struggling to follow you. And we don't confess this morning out of fear because as your word tells us, Perfect love drives out all fear because fear has to do with punishment. But we confess out of a longing to be who you have called us to be in this time and place. So I invite you now in the silence of your hearts to just acknowledge those places where you need God's help because you recognize that you're not living in a way that pleases God. I invite you to do that now. And Heavenly Father, for your love that comes, we thank you and we praise you. And we humbly ask you to bless this bread and to bless the cup. Let it remind us of your love and fill us with your love and connect us with your love. May it make your love real and alive and present in our lives so that we might shine your light in all the places you would take us. In Jesus' holy name we pray and all God's people said, amen. Amen. If the servers would please come forward. Again, if you're, um, feel free to have your children come up with you. And if they're not ready, uh, Carter will have a, a sucker form. Okay, this gets a little tricky, especially on a day like today when we're so full. Um, but here's how it works. This is our center aisle. And at all, all sections will filter through the center aisle. And what you'll find is that there's more people on this side of the center aisle than there are on this side of the center aisle. So these people get a lot of business over here, and these people are lonely. So... When you get to the front of the line, no matter which side you're coming up to, please go to whichever side is open, okay? And we promise you you'll get back to a seat, probably yours, but you'll get back to a seat. All right, so um, Gina, just give me one second. Just step to your left. Thank you. We just got to, it's a little tight today. And I think we're good over there. All right, starting in the front, please. And I need to say, place your hands out. They'll put a piece of bread in your hand, and then we'll invite you to dip that in the cup.
Join me once more in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you as you met us in this time of celebration and song and prayer and communion. Continue to guide us and lead us as we take a look at your wisdom and your way. And that's all I want us to hear this morning, your wisdom and your way. So if my words get in the way, just let them go away so only your light would shine in this time and place. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen. All right, Miss Shannon is ready for you at the back door. We're going to let the, and then 6th through ninth grade, Pastor Ben is ready for you at the back door. And it'll take a minute. If you're newer to the church and you've never been to family service before, you come to this part of the service and you're like, man, we've been here for a long time and the message is just starting. So we do have, this is the short version of the message. If you want the, the full, uh, not condensed version of the message, we do the 830 um, service is is online, and it if you compare the two, that one will be about twice as long as about what you're about to get, all right? So this will be the short one, but I want to start off as we let all those kids go by giving you a little taste of my childhood. This is a store that still looks like this today. This is Bachman's store in a little town called Central Lake, Michigan. I know it is part of my childhood. There's another family in this church where uh, Jeff, who grew up uh, near here and has relatives who still live in Central Lake, it's a part of his childhood too, and I know his kids now, uh, some of whom just walked out those doors, it's a part of their childhood too because when I grew up, we would go up north, same two weeks in August every year, and this place was like a mile from the cabin that we would stay in, and we would walk there, and, you know, it would be like once a year, we're going to walk up to Bachman's, and when you walked into Bachman's, it still looks like these pictures are from, this is on their website, so it looks like this today, so, you know, I'm like this big, like those little kids who just walked out here, and I would walk in, and I would be looking up, and I would see that candy counter, Right there. Like, that thing is fantastic. And it was old school, and they still have it. They had, they would have that scale. That was a scale 60 years ago when I was a kid. It's still there. I don't think they replaced it. doesn't look like they replaced it, does it? And you get the little bag, and you could reach in, and you could get all the different things and get your candy and put it in the bag, and they would weigh it. And I was just, like, thrilled, right? And look, I didn't realize we still got these, but... I used to love to get the little fake candy cigarettes. <laughs> I thought they did away with them, but apparently they have not done away with them. I don't know, maybe someone needs to talk. But, but that's, <laughs> that's the way it still looks today. And the anticipation, like as you're walking, you know, it was a mile. And when you're little and you're walking a mile, it, it feels like a long way. But just the anticipation and the joy then of getting that candy, which brings us now to this new series that Pastor Dave and I will be preaching through over the next few weeks. It's called I'll Be Happy When. And I know as I was walking toward that candy store, I was like, I'll be happy when I have my candy, right? And then what happens, you know, some of the more common I'll be happy wins you know, romance, school, career, family, accomplishments. What, what can end up happening, what happened for me, I'm sure it happens for most of us, is the candy just changes. You know, as I'm walking down that street, I'm anticipating this candy that I'm going to get, you know. And now then, it's like, I'll be happy when I meet that someone. I'll be happy when I get that job. I'll be happy when I get that promotion. Somebody in the last service who's around my age is like, I'll be happy when I retire. So like you get to a certain age, right? That's where you start, where your I be happy when starts going. And I want to say there's nothing wrong with this type of thinking. It's good that we have goals. It's good that people have ambition and passion and that they work towards those things. It becomes a problem when we put our hopes 
in attaining those goals. And we forget that we need to keep our hope firmly and completely in Jesus Christ. And so, in this series, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the parables of Jesus. And each week, we'll take a look at a parable and we'll see how that parable is helping us understand when we'll truly be happy when. When life truly, can, we can get our lives to a place of, of beauty and deep meaning. So, in this series, I, I have here, beyond context, I'm, I'm about to say we got to go beyond context. Now, some of you who have been in the series the whole summer, you're like, every, <laughs> the angel said, because like, every message this summer was about, here's how you put scripture into context. And we ask questions like, where is it written? And we learn how to understand the history, what's going on at that time, and the culture, what's going on at that time. And the literary context of the scriptures, how, what form of writing are we looking at? But here's why I say beyond context. Because we want to go beyond context to living the good news. So, because Paul says it like this, right? If, if you have knowledge, it can puff you up, but love builds up. So it's good to get the knowledge. It's good to understand what's going on in the scriptures and how, how they work, and very, very importantly, how they are calling us to live today, that's important. But you got to get to, if it's just in our heads, and we're not living that love and bringing that love into the world, then it, then it stops. So, let's start with some context after I... <laughs> and the context I want to talk about is this. Pastor Dave did a great job... This was this from like a month ago when he was preaching and he talked to us about the different types of genres or the different types of writing in the scriptures. And you have prophecy and narrative and poetry and wisdom and gospel and letters and, and the apocalyptic writings. So wisdom from the Old Testament, that part of the Bible that comes to us from before Jesus and sets up Jesus so that we can have a good understanding of who Jesus will be. The wisdom books that we took a look at in our last series were Job and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And Ecclesiastes, we took a look at a little bit in that series, but if you remember, if you were here last week, I talked about it and I said, that'll be next week. So here you are, and it's next week. So here's what I want to say about Ecclesiastes to help us understand the parable that we're going to look at in just a minute. Ecclesiastes is the I'll be happy win book of the Old Testament. It comes to us from a guy that maybe you've heard this name before, Solomon. Sometimes we talk about the wisdom of Solomon or the riches of Solomon. The wisdom of Solomon because he's a really smart guy. The riches of Solomon because he had a lot. And to this day when they do like the richest people in history list, a lot of times, they, even though we don't have, you know, like records like they keep today where we know by the penny, but they just, they read about them, they're like, okay, this guy's at least as, as rich as these people, you know, the Rockefellers and the Car Carnegie's. So he, so this is the I'll Be Happy Win book. And it basically starts off, <laughs> he basically starts off with, look, I've chased everything. It's meaningless. If I'm not what? Following God. So he starts out like this in the first chapter. I said to myself, look, I have increased in wisdom more than anyone. I'm the smartest guy. Read all the books. Know all the things. Have all, they didn't, you know, didn't do degrees so much back then, but in today's day, have all the degrees. Been to all the cool schools. Wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also madness and folly. I want to learn it all. But I learned that this too is a chasing after the wind. It's nothing. It's not important. Then he says in chapter 2, I said to myself, come now. I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proved meaningless. And then in chapter 2, he's going on and on about, I tried this, I tried this, I tried this. Eh. And then he goes to money. 
Whoever loves money, he says, never has enough. I don't know, I think this quote gets attributed to a few different ones. I don't know if it was Rockefeller or Carnegie, one of those guys who just had so much money they didn't know what to do with. And that somebody said to him, how much would be enough? And they said, just a little bit more, right? Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. And then he finishes up the book. And I know like over the last few weeks, I've referenced this book a few times. It, it's a good one to read. It's just 12 chapters. It doesn't take that long to read it. I would encourage you, sit down and read it because there's this beautiful rhythm. You kind of feel like maybe he needs a session with Dave over at Renewed Hope Counseling Center <laughs> because you're kind of feeling like, boy, is he... Is he depressed? But he's not, I don't think he is. I think what he's doing is he's recognizing where true meaning is in life. And so he's kind of, he brings out the truth by kind of being sarcastic and, and a little crass with how, with how he's talking. But then he gets to the end of the book and he says this. All has been heard. I've tried it all. I've had it all. I've done it all. Here's the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. Literary context, fear God. What we're translating from the ancient Hebrew, that fear there, you could also say it like this, reverence God. Stand in awe of God. And the fear becomes what it's Solomon's fear. I might miss it. I might miss the true meaning and the true goodness in this life by following after money, by following after power, by by following after pleasure, and miss. Like it's a fear of, I don't want to miss it. Because that's where where true meaning lies. So now, we're coming to the New Testament. And I said we're going to be in these parables of Jesus. And we're going to be in the Gospels. And the Gospel simply means good news. It's good news. In our world that's broken, that struggles, that has all sorts of trouble, Jesus Christ is good news. Jesus Christ is a breath of fresh air. Jesus Christ is that peace that surpasses all our understanding, that can guide us through difficult days in our lives, in our community, in our world. And so in the Gospels, we have these parables. And parables are simply these simple stories used to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson. And here, here comes our parables for the day, today. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. Then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything that he had, and he bought it. So living into the treasure is living in Christ. So when I say living in Christ, what does that mean? Well, we do this every week. I'll talk about communion just a second, but every week at communion, we talk about what living in Christ looks like. It's when we say, Jesus, you're Lord, you're God. You're the God I love. You're the God I follow. You're the God I listen to. You're, when you say, when you have a commandment, I'm going to follow that commandment because I know that's where true happiness and meaning lies. And when we say he's our Savior, that's that thing that we do during communion where we pause and we reflect and we say, Lord, these are the ways I need you to to save me now. These are the ways I'm missing it. And for some of us, you know, we're new to the faith and we're making that commitment for the first time and that's great. And again, if, if you're in that space, then please see me, see Pastor Dave and let's talk through what it looks like as, as we're following. But some of us have been on this journey for decades. It's good for us 
to confess and remember too. Because we can get to that place where, man, I've been doing this forever and we're, and we're, we're not following and we get, we get off and we go on our own way. So living in Christ is acknowledging Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. The first time we do that is important. Praise God. And then for those of us who have been following for a long time, we keep doing it. We keep acknowledging it. And that's why we continue to, to confess. Jesus says it like this. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. One of the contexts that we talked about is what we bring to the scripture, what I bring to the scripture. I will confess to you right now that for years, as I read that, even not just, you know, subconsciously, like not thinking, but this is what I was thinking, right? <laughs> Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. So I would do like, okay, God, I'm no longer going for the pleasure. I'm no longer going for the power. I'm no longer going for the riches. I'm just searching you so that you can give me the power and the riches and the pleasure. Because that's because I'm bringing me to the script. And you can't help but do it. I can't help but do it. But then, if you were with us last week, we were looking at Romans chapter 8. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And then we kept reading because we're learning how to put scripture in context. And we found that his purpose is that we would be conformed to the image of God. So when I seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, then slowly the Holy Spirit working in my life with the little I'm learning right now, thanks to Miss Shannon, though as the Holy Spirit works in our lives, then we, then we look more and more like Jesus Christ. So how are we going to do this? How exactly? Well, we do it through community, and we do it by living in community. And that's, you get, we have to remember, as, as the church starts out, they don't have the Bible yet. Especially in the book of Acts, the, it has, the, the Gospels haven't been written. When the, the first church started, they haven't even written, the Gospels haven't even been written down yet. But what do they have? They have each other. And they have a community. And God, and, and, as Jesus is leaving, God, as we see in Jesus Christ, puts them into a community and tells them to love each other and care for each other and, and work together. So we live into the treasure of, by living in Christ and by living in community. And we see how that looks in Acts chapter 2. The early church living the good news. And, and it looked in the middle of the chapter, it looks like this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And it says, if you would keep reading there, it says, they just sacrificed for each other. They cared for each other. They sold their, their possessions. They gave to those who had needs. They just worked together, supporting each other, loving each other, caring for each other. And it starts off that Peter, he's one of Jesus' followers, he's given this beautiful speech He's proclaimed the good news. He's proclaimed the gospel. And the people there listening, they say, what should we do? And he says, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. And when you go to Miss Shannon, she'll tell you what that looks like. But you will receive the Holy Spirit. And then, this is what, as they receive the Spirit, and the church gets into action, then that's the next sentence. And this gives us a look at a well-rounded discipleship. The first thing we see is they're devoted. It's important to them. Now, I want to I just say this really quickly. We live at a time where we've gone through this major disruption. And so now the change that's happened in the church is kind of incredible, the, the short amount of time. So like on any given Sunday, 25% to 33%, about a quarter to a third of the people connecting 
to our church are connecting and they're not walking through the doors. They're connecting online. Like that's every week. 25 to a third. And any given week, our people at home or in their trailer, I know some of you looking right now are in your trailer, <laughs> the retired ones, so we're, we're someday, right? <laughs> we'll be happy when. Or there, you know, there's people who have moved down to Florida and they still stay connected. So we have to say now, they devoted themselves. Maybe devotion looks a little bit different for us now in this day and this age. But I think we can do this. We can say devotion looks like this. Like, this is my encouragement to all of us. <laughs> Be devoted to making the connection. Because I know there's a lot of people who, some weeks you're here and some weeks you're at home. That, that 25 to 30%, you know, they, those are people who are traveling or have moved out of state or have connected in other ways. But some of it, it's, I'm sick this week and I'm staying at home. But see, that's where, that's the beauty. You're sick this week and you can still connect. You can still be part of the community. You can still join in prayer with your brothers and sisters. So that's what, so that's my encouragement as we look at devoted. And what did they devote themselves to? The, the apostles' teaching. The teaching, obviously, that's why Pastor Dave and I spent so much time going over, here's how you read the Bible. Here's what context looks like. That's why we're doing this class on November 2nd where we'll talk about reading the Bible. But understanding what the scriptures are calling us to. And again, not just understanding in our heads, but, under, but then putting that into practice. And then next, the fellowship. Don't miss this. Because basically, <laughs> being a disciple looks like walking out of here and grabbing a burger and going under the tent and hanging out for a little while and getting to know somebody and being there with each other and being in each other's lives and building up that community. Because we all know, you know, we, we, we pray that these kids are going to have a great year. But we also know some of them are going to get bullied. We also know some of them, are, they're going to have hard times. Some of them are going to struggle with their academics and then they're going to have all the self-doubt running through. But we also know that if you have a community, if you have people who love you and care for you, you can get through those tough times. And you can be supported in those tough times. So too often what we do, because we live now where, you know, there's gazillion books and... There's all these, you know, institutions of higher learning. We think that discipleship is like an inf information transfer. Like, it's just the apostles' teaching. I give you the apostles' teaching. But it's about fellowship. It's about a community. It's about being together. It's about supporting each other and loving each other. And then when it says to the breaking of bread, I already explained this. In this context, it means taking communion. And again, as I said, what do we, what we do when we take communion that's important for those people who don't believe yet, we're calling them to cross that line and say, you know what, yes, I'm ready, I'm in. For those of us who have believed for a long time, it's a call back. And it's a call to confession, which is very important. Because confession then allows us to make space for God to do the work in our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and souls that only God can do. And I have to empty a little bit of me, and I have to say, God, I need you because I'm still struggling here. So that's why communion is so important. And then finally, prayer. And here's, it, it, with devotion, my encouragement is stay connected to the church. And you know, I, this time of year, I always say this. I'll say it again this year. If this isn't the church for you, that's cool. That's fine. We want you to find a good church. So if this isn't the one for you, I know most of the pastors in town. I like most of the pastors in town. <laughs> They're good people. And I would be happy to get you, you know, over to one of their churches so that you can, you can be a part there. That's, that's great. But connect somewhere. And how we connect around here is we connect with prayer. So tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., there'll be a prayer list that'll go out. 
And people pray through that list every week. It's a way that we stay connected to each other. It's a way that we lift each other up. And now, here's the encouragement. So some people get together in small groups or with a partner, and then they pray together. So they might meet at a coffee shop. I know some of the groups, they just call each other on the phone, and they have a little time where they're praying together. And so if you're new to the church and you don't have a prayer partner, you're not part of a prayer group, but you would like to be, this is a time of year where we have you go ahead and put your name down and your contact information. We'll get in touch with you and we will get you connected uh, to a prayer group. And so uh, that sign up is right across the hall. So here's the encouragement for today. Will we, and then I, I, I Here's what I'm going to say. Make a plan to stay connected to community this upcoming school year. Make a plan to stay connected to Christ, stay connected to community. I can do the, will we make a plan to stay connected, but just do it, right? Because this is, that's where life has, that's where we find the true meaning. That's where we find the true happiness. I'm still that little kid looking up at all the candy and thinking it'll be great. But God is standing right in front of me telling me, if you really want to live, connect with me and connect with my people and you will live. And all these things will be added to you. So let's connect to God. And as we do and as we go from this place, may the Lord himself bless you and keep you. May he be kind and gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace, which surpasses all our understanding. And all God's people said, amen. amen.